today is uh, your radio file. Wait, wait lang po ha. Wait. We'll wait for the others. Baka makompleto lang magandang. Nakakistore mo kasi nagpapa-admit. So, hintay lang natin sila. Okay, okay. So, okay na tayo. So, so your ray of viruses, are, these are double stranded linear okay, RNA. And the size of these uh, ray of viruses is usually 60 to 80 nanometer in size. And most of these ray of viruses, uh, majority of which are proteins. Okay, so the family includes, so we have group, uh, several genera of your ray of viruses, okay, um, which include, can include also your rotaviruses. Now, your rotaviruses is the most important cause of your infantile, okay, infantile uh, gastroenteritis around the world. So you can see in the developed countries and the developing countries, rotavirus, test, rotavirus is still the leading cause of your infantile gastroenteritis. And this is a very common disease with a significant public health impact, okay, because your rotaviruses uh, is very, very infectious. Okay, once a patient, an infant has a rotavirus, it can infect uh, water okay, or uh, drinking water, which may spread in a community. So another genera, another genera of your rayoviruses are known as your calici. Okay, your Khaleesi viruses. So Khaleesi viruses are small. Okay, so they are small viruses with a single-stranded RNA genome. Same, same. So the family also contains okay, your noroviruses. Your, so we have your rotaviruses. Okay, we have your noroviruses. So these are the major cause of non-bacterial epidemic gastroenteritis worldwide. So later on, we will discuss this later. And lastly, we have the astrovirus. Okay, the astroviruses can also cause gastroenteritis. So all of them, rayoviruses, can cause gastroenteritis. But your rota is the most common okay, uh, infantile, cause of, uh, infantile gastroenteritis around the world. Now, let's go or discuss first your rayoviruses and rota. First, okay, your, your rayoviruses okay, are ecosahedral. See, this is an ecosahedral shape. And it's 60 to 80 nanometer in diameter. And majority of your rayoviruses is a protein, 85%. And this uh, protein, this one, the, uh, the, ito yung mga yan. Okay. And these proteins are necessary, necessary for uh, replication. Okay. Necessary for replication of the uh, virus. So your proteins are nine, there are nine structural proteins. Okay. And the core. This one, the core contains several, okay, yung gitna. Okay, the core contains here several, okay, several enzymes necessary for your uh, viral replication. So your, your ray of viruses are non-enveloped, okay? So there is a trans transient pseudo-envelope, okay? So it's present during rotavirus particle morphogenesis, during only the more, during the uh, immature, okay, uh, production of your, Rayo, there is envelope, but once they mature, they do not contain anymore the envelope. 
since this is an RNA, it replicates in the cytoplasm. It may replicate in the cytoplasm. So what are the outstanding characteristics? You have the genetic reassortment. Okay, so they can change. Uh, so meaning reassortment, uh, this virus can change the structure. Okay, They can change the structure such that it cannot easily be recognized by your... Uh, and with corona, it changes structure so that it cannot be recognized by your antibody. That's why in the in the future we may need boosters for vaccines. Okay, so kasi bumababarin yung antibody level. So rotaviruses are the major cause of infantile diarrhea. Okay, major cause of infantile. Overall, rayo is a major cause of infantile diarrhea. And uh, the most common cause of infantile diarrhea okay, is still your, okay, is still your uh, rota uh, viruses. Okay, rota viruses. Okay. So, so replication, again, is cytoplasm. So rayo okay, are uh, good models for molecular studies of viral pathogenesis. So this is how your structure and composition of your rayo viruses. So your rayo viruses are double shell particle. Okay, so it's com this is the complete, uh, complete infectious form of the uh, virus. Okay, so it contains several enzymes. I said 85% of your rayo virus contains some proteins and these proteins are the enzymes needed for viral replication. So your rota Okay, it's very, very stable to 50 degrees centigrade. Okay, so when you try to hit a water in order to, to kill the rotavirus, you have to okay, hit the water more than 50 degrees centigrade. And they are stable at 3 to 9 range of pH. Okay, so they are stable at lipid solubates. Okay, so they cannot be killed by ether or chloroform, but they can be killed 95% your ethanol, phenol, and chlorine. So meaning your 75% et, uh, ethyl alcohol cannot kill your rotavirus. It needs your 95% and it needs chlorine. Okay, so pwede na yung uh, bleach. Okay? This can kill surfaces contaminated with your rotavirus. Okay, so these are the classifications of your uh, rayovirus. So your rayovirus is composed of two subfamily, a uh, subfamily, your sedereoviridae and your spinareoviridae. Now, your sedo okay, has two genus, okay, two gene, gene, genera. Okay, you have the orbivirus and you have the rota, while your spina has two genera also. You have the ortho, okay, rayovirus, and the colti okay, virus. Now, your orbivirus okay, has five viruses, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so, but we will not discuss in detail this one because this is not naman common here in the uh, Philippines. So, what we are going to give in detail discussion is the rotavirus. So the rotavirus is composed of your A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. So your rotavirus A, B, and C, these are the most common causing your human gastroenteritis. Okay, And the most common of which is your rotavirus A. Now your orto, orto, orto rayovirus, you have your a avian, okay, sa iba naman, and hot mammalian. Okay, and your culti, you have the Colorado, Colorado tick fever. So these are the group of your rayoviruses. So as I've said, your rotavirus is composed of A, B, C, D, E, and you have the F and G. Your A, B, C infect your human, and A is the most common. Okay, so now your rotavirus does not only infect humans, it also infect animals. So whatever strains, na nag infect sa human can also infect the animals. So same strains. So other rotaviruses groups and secretory are found only in animals. So there are uh, groups of rotaviruses that can only be found in animals but not in humans. But there are several okay, groups of rotaviruses infecting men and animals. So this is an example of an electron microscope of your rotavirus. So you can see here in letter D, it's a double shell, okay, double shell particles. So this is the infectious form, okay. Sabi ko nga, the, the double shell rotavirus is the infectious form of your rotavirus. So this is shell. Uh, you can see in letter E, 
Okay, it's a camp, empty. Okay, this is an empty. So, tignan mo wala. Dito, punong-puno. Okay? So, this one, uh, meron lang sa gitna. It's an empty. And this is an empty capsid. Okay? So, this is an just an electron microscope. Look at this one. And the insect, this is our single-shelled particle obtained by treatment of viral preparation with sodium. Okay? So, this is the more infectious form in letter D. So, this is how they replicate. So, uh, just read over this one and I will explain these uh, illustrations. So, you have your, uh, your rayovirus attaching. Okay? So, it attaches to the plasma membrane. So, once it attaches to the plasma membrane, okay, it acquires the plasma membrane in the site, uh, going into the cytoplasm. Then, this uh, part okay, will undergo protrolytic cleavage. Okay? So, there will be disassembled. So, magkakaroon ng protrolytic cleavage in order to release okay, this uh, nucleocapsid containing the double-stranded linear RNA. So, inside the nucleocapsid, you have the double-stranded RNA and it will release the linear RNA. So, this linear RNA will undergo transcription. Okay? So, will undergo transcription and it goes into the ribosome okay, will and undergo translation. So this will be translated. So these proteins will be translated into a new virus. So these are immature virus because they have not yet completed their structures. And once they have completed the structure, they will now, this one, virus will assemble to form a new nucleocapsid. Okay? A new a nucleocapsid with the virus. So there will be core assembly. Okay? They will replicate. Okay? Once they mature, they will now be okay, uh, undergo maturation and they will aggress. So this is now a mature form of your virus and ready to be released to infect another cell. So imagine it replicates in the cytoplasm and this is the nucleus. So the nucleus does not have nothing to do with the replication of your uh, ray of viruses. It replicates in the uh, cytoplasm. So go over with this. So this is just an explanation of these illustrations. Okay, so let's move on to your rotaviruses. So your rotaviruses, these are, as I've said, are the major cause of diarrhea illness in human infants, okay? also young animals. So yung mga kapapanganak lang are also animals newly, okay? parang newly born. Okay? Uh, young animals or the young animals are also infected. Sa infant naman, sa, sa human, is usually infants, but can also infect adults, but more commonly sa infant. So among the rotavir uh, rotaviruses are agents. So these are some agents of the rotaviruses. Okay? Agents of human, infantile, nebra. So these are just nice to know. So in summary, okay, for the structural features, your rota, rota meaning it's a wheel. Okay? So it looks like a wheel like on an electron microscope. Again, the size is a little bit larger than your picorna. So it's 60 to 80 nanometer in size. It's a double-stranded linear RNA, so it has no envelope. Okay? So group A, as I've said, is the most important human pathogen. And there are seven groups, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Okay? And there are five predominant strains. You have G1, G2, G3, G4, and G9, okay? which accounts for 90% of the isolate. So your G1 accounts for the 73% of infection. So among the most common strains of your rotaviruses is your G1. Okay? So your group A rotaviruses is the most common cause of human pathogen, causing infantile diarrhea. So this is an important illustration of your rotaviruses. Okay? So we have the VP4, the viral protein 4, and the viral protein 7. So your 4 and 7 are outer, okay? outer uh, capsid, okay? outer capsid protein. So this VP4 and this VP7 are the one involved in uh, antibody binding, okay? particularly on here, the VP4 and the VP7. Now you see here, okay, the outer capsid, VP4 and VP7 carry the epitope. So when you say the epitope, this is the part where the immunoglobulin bind, okay? where the immunoglobulins bind. Okay? And once the immunoglobulin binds to BV4 BV4 and BV7, it neutralizes the okay, it neutralizes the rotavirus. Parang sa SARS-CoV-2, the spike, 
okay, the spike protein, okay, the spike protein, uh, you know, the antibody binds to the spike protein of the SARS-CoV-2 in order not to bind into ACE2 receptors. So the BP7 is the predominant antigen. This one, the BP7 is the predominant antigen. So it's still located in the outer areas. So this type-specific antigen differentiate among rotaviruses and are demonstrable by neutralization tests, your antigen antibody. Okay, so this is uh, illustrated in your Jowets. Okay, so as you can see, VP1, 1, 2, 11. So you have 11 okay, segments of your uh, rotaviruses. So these are 11 structural, uh, uh, structural uh, viral protein and non structural. The NSP are the non structural proteins encoded by this segment. So there are around 11. In illustration B, you see your BP4 and BP7, which forms the outer capsid. Now, if you try to remove the outer okay, layer, the outer capsid, you can see here the intermediate, okay, the intermediate BP6. You see the BP6 here is the intermediate BP6 layer. And the innermost, the innermost layer are the VP2, okay, VP2 layer. So this one, innermost VP2 layer is indicated. So your VP1. Okay, uh, yeah, this one. The VP1 and VP3 are attached to your VP2. Okay, so nakatikit siya sa VP2. So VP1 and the copy are attached okay, to your VP2 layer, VP1 and VP3. Now you can see in illustration D, this one D, this is a proposed organization. These are your double stranded, yeah, my yellow one. These are the double stranded RNA genome okay, inside the VP2 layer. Okay, inside the PP2 okay, layer, yan, along with the transcription enzymes, complexes, VP1 and VP3. So, so your VP1 and VP3 contain the transcription enzymes. Yan, okay? And this is depicted as the uh, balls, yan, parang balls yan, the VP1 and the VP3, okay? which contain several enzymes. So this is how they replicate. So for example, so you exit the transcript from the channels at the five fold, okay, vertices and actively transcribe, okay, actively transcribing. Yan. Ito yung ribosome. For example, this is a 70S ribosome. This is the 30S ribosome. Pupunta sa gitna, and this will be transcribed into a protein, okay, and then they will assemble to make a new virus, okay. So your rotna have a wide host range, okay? So wide, because it affects humans and animals. So it's very, very wide. So they can be recovered in newborn animals with diarrhea, especially in windling piglets, okay? Mga newborn piglets, they can be easily infected with rotaviruses, okay? So newborn can exhibit subclinical. So newborn may, sub, uh, uh, may exhibit some clinical, hindi gano halata, pero nagtatail pa konti-konti because subclinical, because they still have the antibody coming from the mother. So they are fastidious agents. So meaning fastidious, they are slow growing. So when you try to culture them, viral culture, it usually grows very, very slow. Okay, so that is what we call fastidious. So Hindi fast, it's usually slow growing virus. So most group A human right, can be cultivated if pre-treated. So they need your trypsin okay, in the culture media for your retrovirus to replicate. Now, this is an important pathogenesis of your rotaviruses. So your rotaviruses can be acquired, okay, can be acquired through fecal oral. Okay, fecal oral. You see here in illustration the pathogenesis of bacteria. So once you ingest a contaminated water with rotavirus, so the in, it infect. Yan. Okay, this is the intestinal. This is the microbili with microbili. Okay, so this, are, for example, yung mga epithelial cells. So infected absorptive enterocytes are killed. Okay, causing patchy epithelial cell destruction and villus shortening. So in the, see. There will be villus shortening, okay, and patchy. So magtatanggalan yung mga epithelial cells. So remember, your villus are number one uh, responsible for enhancing the absorption. So it increases the absorptive capacity of the intestines. Okay. So let there be. So once there is patchy, okay, uh, magtatanggal yung mga epithelial cells. There will be uh, the destroyed epithelial absorptive cells are rapidly replaced by the cells that migrate from the crypt. So it will be rapidly replaced by the cells that migrate. These are the crypt. It will migrate inside 
Okay? So, wala diyan, di naman yan. So, ito yung mga creep, okay, creep cells. But these creep cells are still immature. Okay? They are still immature such that they cannot be still absorbed fluids and electrolytes. So, these are your cryptic, okay, uh, coming from the cryptic cells, and these are your immature, okay, immature non-absorptive secretory cells. Yeah. Okay? So, there is still no brush border, okay, and no brush border inside. Okay, now, so this is very important here in the, uh, the over part. So again, this is your patchy. Okay, so this is the rotavirus. So the rotavirus destroys the epithelial cells. Okay, once it destroys the epithelial cells, this one, sisira na siya. So it decreases the absorptive capacity of the intestines. And this rotavirus also releases what we call the NSP4. So the NSP4 is the enterotoxin of your rotavirus causing your gastroenteritis also. Okay? And there are mononuclear cell infiltrations. Mononuclear cells infiltration. Okay? So here is the summary of your pathogenesis of your rotavirus. So rotavirus infect the cells, really of the small intestine. So they multiply in the cytoplasm of enterocytes and damage the transport mechanism. So once the rotavirus is encoded proteins, the NSP4, so this is a viral enterotoxin that increases secretion of your triggering signal transduction pathway. So there will be fluids and electrolyte losses. So the damaged cells, you want, may slough off into the lumen, okay, into the lumen of intestine and release large quantities of virus into the lumen of the intestine. So the virus Okay, Maria really state eventually into the lumen of the intestines, okay, and the patient defecates, the patient is infectious. So it usually excrete, usually lasts from 2 to 12 days, okay, in a healthy, but in a poor nutritional uh, infant, it can excrete more than 12 days. So the area caused by rota may be due to impaired sodium and glucose absorption because of the damaged villi. So it may take from 3 to 8 weeks for normal function to be restored. Okay, so this is the summary of the pathogenesis again. Okay, so there will be the destruction of the epithelial cells. There will be sloughing off of these epithelial cells. And the epithelial cells are the absorptive capacity of the intestine. Kaya lang magtatanggalan sila. Papaltan ng immature, non-absorptive. Okay, so the damage in the epithelial cells and brush borders, but limited inflammation. So there will only be mononuclear cells. Okay, there will be no macrophages, there will be no polymorph nuclear cells, only limited inflammation. So the diarrhea is secondary to the destruction of the epithelial cells, okay, because of the NSP4. This is an enterotoxin released by your rotavirus and activation of your enteric nervous system, which may contribute to pathogenesis and which may also fever. So previous infection leads to incomplete protection again. So kaya nga, uh, they have genetic reassortment. So previous infection does not confer immunity. So you can still be infected. Okay? So un unless you have the vaccine for your rotavirus. So again, this is the mechanism of diarrhea summarized here. So what is important is there is the decreasing villi surfaces, decreasing more than 50% of the absorptive capacity. Yeah. They damage the villi and they are replaced by your immature, non-absorbing uh, cells. So it leads to water diarrhea, activation of the enteric, neuroenteric, and the release of NS. So this is the summary of the mechanism of diarrhea. Okay, so same through with this one. Okay, so this is an important uh, table on your uh, Jowets okay, regarding your rotavirus, the group A, B, and C. So you see your A, okay, so this is the single most uh, important cause of your viral endemic severe diarrhea. Your B can cause outbreaks. Your C can cause sporadic, sporadic cases. So your A needs hospitalization, while the other one does not need hospitalization. So it's still self-limiting. So you have enteric adenovirus, okay, second most important viral agent, endemic diarrheal illness, and it needs hospitalization. So we have the Khaleesi viruses. Under this are your noroviruses, important cause of outbreaks, vomiting in children, you see, adults, okay, in uh, nursing home communities, frequently associated with ingestion of food. And we have the Saparo viruses. And we have also the astroviruses. Can also infect children and elderly adults as well as infants. So this, this is an important table in the child. 
So your uh, findings in laboratory diagnosis, okay? So uh, excretion in the stool may persist up to 50 days after the onset of diarrhea, okay? Especially for poor nutritional infant, poor nutrition, so mga malnourished infants. In children with immunodeficiency, this one, okay, can cause severe and prolonged diseases, okay? So again, this is the summary of the clinical features of your rotaviruses. Okay, so the incubation is one to three days. Okay, so watery diarrhea, fever, abdominal pain, vomiting, loss of electrolytes. So this is the most important uh, part is the dehydration. This is it where it kills the infants, the dehydration, if not replace. Okay, so it needs an IV fluid because the patient is vomiting. Okay, so first infection after three months, generally most severe, may be asymptomatic as a result of severe dehydration, diarrhea with fever and vomiting. So GI symptoms, Okay, usually result in three to seven days. Okay, so laboratory diagnosis is your antibody title, your enzyme immunoassay. So PCR is the most sensitive detection method. Okay, ganun naman pati sa RT-PCR, SARS-CoV-2, PCR is still the most uh, sensitive detection method. Okay, most of the viruses, usually PCR. Okay, so this is the epidemiology. So this is common among infants. So it has spread in the 1973 identified cause of diarrhea. So most common are infants and children. So five years of age, okay, uh, spreads in the setting of a nursing uh, daycare center. Okay, daycare center. So see this one, adults too can get infected. But most commonly, so infants. So treatment is supportive. So just like viral gastroenteritis, supportive management, so fluids and electrolytes. But the patient is vomiting, the patient may need an IV fluids. Okay, so management consists of replacement of your fluids. So, so it's important that you have to hydrate. So how would you know that the patient is hydrated? Okay, so you may know that the patient is hydrated if the patient is urinating too much or urinating well. Okay, so if the urine output, kumarami urine output, it's meaning that is the most important sign that the patient is well hydrated. Okay, and second, you need to check the mucous membrane, kung wet na siya, and the skin turgor. Okay, so how do we prevent rotavirus? So we have your vaccine. So you have your Rotarix vaccine. So, so this is a liquid vaccine. So para siyang oral polio, bibigay mo lang siya. And it, two doses, two and four. You have the RV5. Okay, so it's a pentavalent. So it covers your rotavirus A, B, C, D, E, five. Okay, so it, con sorry, it contains the G1, the strain G1, G2, G3, G4, and the PIA. Okay, so these are the five strains covered by your Rotatec RV5. So three doses, two months, four, and six months. So these Rotarix and Rotatec are live attenuated. Okay, so live, uh, so live attenuated. Yung iba, sorry, sorry. Okay, so yung mga monovalent, uh, when you see live attenuated, they are contraindicated sa mga immunocompromise, immunocompromise. So both vaccines are safe and effective. Okay, so in general, let's go back to your rayoviruses. So rayoviruses are ubiquitous. Okay, so they are this uh, worldwide. Okay, so they are related uh, types of rayo have been recovered from many species as demonstrated by neutralization, heme agglutination inhibition. So your rayo okay, contain heme agglutinin for human O or bovine erythrocytes. Okay, so your rayo viruses, okay, so this one is the pathogenesis. Wait, I have to answer this important call lang po. Sandali lang po. Hello po.
Okay, eh, eh. Wait lang po. Oo nga, doping na. Kaya lang, kaya kami sa okay lang ba doping na. Hindi na po silang pati. Yung katulad lang. Yung Sorry po, I have to answer the COVID patients. Okay, so vesicle is targeted to lysosome fusion, this one. Okay, so there will be lys uh, the lysosomes enter here, and once the lysosome enters here, it releases its acidic pH, and uh, the virus okay, will be released into the cytoplasm. So, ganun din, say the same through this nucleoclops, it contains the single stranded RNA, it will release the RNA, it will undergo transcription, translation to form another virus. And this virus will now be released to infect another cell. So, this is how, same with other viruses, their main mechanism of replication. So, this one, the inner capsid uncoats, yeah. Okay, the inner capsid uh, uncoats RNA, releasing RNA to the cytoplasm, yung mga VP1, VP3. So, viral RNA synthesized is initiated. So, viral polypeptide, this one, are, they are synthesized and viral helicase synthesizes second strand RNA and assembly, this one, assembly occurs in the cytoplasm where the mature virus exit when the cell dies from slices. So eventually this cell will die. Okay, so this is the epidemiology of your uh, rayoviruses, usually more on some poultry. Okay, so vertical transmission is known to reduce egg laying rate and increases premature chick death. So rayo infection can be transmitted directly from one animal to another. Okay, so they are resistant also to heat and disinfectant, causing them to survive in hatcheries and farms. So pathogen properties of rayo are primarily determined by the protein species found on the outer capsid of the virion. Outer capsid, the pathogenesis, because this is one that attaches to our receptor in our body, the VP4 uh, uh, and 7. 
Okay, so let's go to our B viruses and call the viruses, sa mga espina. So the genus with virus family, they commonly infect si inf insects naman. And are transmitted by insect to vertebrates, so from insect to humans. Okay, so none of these viruses cause serious clinical diseases. Remember, your Orbi and Colti does not need hospitalization. So what only needs hospitalization are your rotaviruses and your adenoviruses, your enteric adenoviruses. But this one uh, does not cause serious illness. So it's usually mild. Okay, so your Colti, their genome consists of 12 segments of double-stranded RNA totaling to 929 kilobytes. So an example of Colti, you have the Colorado tick fever. Okay, transmitted by tick mga insect bite. Okay, so your Kalisi, okay, so is uh, Kalisi virus. I remember in one of the uh, TV series. Okay, uh, in addition to rota and non cultivatable adeno, members of the family Kalisi are important agents of viral gastroenteritis in your So it can cause gastroenteritis as well. So this is the most significant members of the noro. So this is very important virus, your noroviruses, because this has also a history that is spread in the Laguna, okay, Laguna area. So where many daycare centers and infants have been infected. And when they did a PCR, and it showed noroviruses, or otherwise known as the norwalk, parang naglalakad na virus, kumakala, norwalk viruses. So your noro are important cause of outbreaks, vomiting and diarrhea in older children, Okay, mas, mas older children and adults. So, kung sa rota, it's more of an infant. This is more on older children and adults. And it does not need hospitalization because this is still self-limiting. Same with your astroviruses. Okay, so it can cause occasional outbreak. Okay, infants, young children, and elderly. So, it does not need hospitalization. So, this is still self-limiting. Okay, so they are similar to picorna in terms of size, but they're larger than your uh, polioviruses, 27 to 40. Picorna kasi is small, one of the smallest virus, okay, and contains single major structural protein. So the family Kali is divided into five genera. This one, these are nice to know. Okay, so your Kalisi are ecosahedral, 27 to 40. So this is shorter than your rota because you're uh, smaller. Uh, than rota because your rota is 60 to 80. This one is 27 to 40. So the same through the uh, eyes. Yeah, they are single-stranded RNA linear positive sense. Okay, so proteins are polypeptide cleave, okay, precursor. Okay, so they do not have envelope and they also replicate in the cytoplasm. This is very important. Noroviruses are the major cause of non-bacterial epidemic gastroenteritis. And this came out in the board exam. A physician licensure exam. Just was just asked, what is the major cause of non-bacterial epidemic gastroenteritis? Usually, some physician licensure examination is important. The most common, okay, because these are in terms of physician licensure, most common, most important. Okay, human viruses are non-cultivatable, so you cannot cultivate this Kalisi virus in a culture. Okay, so noro can appear to undergo antigenic drip. So it can change its structure such that can also not be recognized by antibodies. So over time, probably in response to population. So there is no immunity still. Okay. So, so your normal or noroviruses are the most important cause of epidemic, yeah, non-bacterial. So it's viral gastroenteritis in adults. So non-bacterial. So this is characterized by the absence of bacterial pathogens. So when you try to culture, you cannot see any bacteria. Okay, gastroenteritis with rapid onset and recovery relatively mild. So meaning if you culture this and you saw bacteria, okay, so this is not a, a calisi, because it's non-bacterial. Okay, so it's highly communicable disease and spread rapidly with no particular protection in terms of age or geography, but commonly it affects the adults. Okay. So the descriptive term have been used to report different outbreaks. Okay, so usually outbreaks during the winter. Okay, during the winter. Okay, so Filipinas rainy season. So these are the common signs and symptoms typical of gastroenteritis. We have nausea, uh, GI symptoms, nausea, abdominal pain, vomiting, diarrhea, fever, and also headaches. So this one. Okay, so dehydration is still the most important complication in young children elderly individuals. So whatever the cause of this uh, diarrhea, 
you still have to hydrate them very well. And I've said the better indicator that the patient is hydrated well is through its urine output. So viral shedding may persist as long as one month. Okay, so antibody developed during this illness, but your antibody is not protective because only short-term basis against reinfection with the same agent. Okay, so, so you develop antibodies, but these antibodies may wait off. It waits off, okay, so bababa rin, and you may also again acquire this okay, uh, virus again. So there is no long-term immunity. Okay, some volunteers may be reinfected with the same virus after about two years. So there is no immunity to this calice. And I think there is no vaccine for your calice viruses. And like Rota, it has a vaccine. Okay, so your diagnostic test is still your RPCR, so amplification of genes. So it's a very, very important uh, diagnostic tool in virus illnesses. So this is your ELISA. Okay, when there is a virus, there will be anti antigen antibody binding and it will emit light. Okay, so it will uh, change this color and it may indicate a positive test for your calice virus. So how do we transfer, okay, acquire, okay, so indirect contact, okay, so three out of the four normal outbreak occur in long-term care facilities like nursing home. So your human kali are worldwide distribution. So your noro are the most common cause of non-bacterial gastroenteritis in the United States. And the viruses are most often associated with epidemic outbreak. Dito sa mga waterborne or foodborne and shellfish associated gastro. So all age group can be affected, but especially sa mga adults. So outbreaks occur throughout the year with seasonal peak during cooler months. So your characteristic of noro include very low infectious dose. Even if you uh, uh, ingest okay, or drunk a water, okay, uh, 10 virus particles can cause okay, these symptoms of your GI symptoms. So multiple modes of transmission can also work by direct contact or uh, uh, contact with uh, inanimate objects with uh, contaminated with these noroviruses. So it sur can survive in chlorine. And like your rota, they can be killed by your chlorine. But this one, uh, 10 parts per million of chlorine and heating 60, okay? Uh, it can survive. Even if you uh, 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 only steam the oysters, it can still survive. So this is the preventive measures. A frequent hand washing, no bear hand contact, uh, prepare food carefully and clean thoroughly and routinely. Okay, so lastly, you have your astro. Your astroviruses okay, cause diarrheal illness and may be shed in extraordinary large quantities in feces. So they are transmitted by fecal oral or contaminated food or water or person-to-person -person contact or inanimate contaminated surfaces. Okay, so they are common in elderly nursing home. Okay, and in fact, also, okay, immunocompromised person. So this is the astro, so it's sporadic cases and occasional outbreaks of diarrhea in the same infants, and it does not need hospitalization. So it's still self-limiting. Okay, so the next topic I discuss is your... Uh, let me share screen. You share, sorry. So let's go to your, uh, just like to discuss your COVID vaccine. Okay, so here's what we call the hunt to COVID-19 vaccine. Okay, so when we speak of immunity, it is defined as the ability of the human body to tolerate the presence of maternal indigenous to the body and to eliminate foreign substances. And that is what we call immunity. And when we define immune system, okay, so this is the discriminatory ability to eliminate foreign substances, your antigen, which is performed by a complex system of interacting cells called the immune system. 
So what does the body recognize are what we call the antigen. So this is the antigen of your SARS-CoV-2 virus, which is the spike. So this is the antigen. So once we recognize the antigen, our immune response okay, will try to produce antibody. Okay, we'll try to produce antibody, the white one, in order to bind to your spike so that when it binds to the spike proteins, it can no longer bind to the ACE2 receptors of our uh, body, like the lung, lung cells, epithelial cells. So your acquired immunity, okay, your acquired immunity is divided into active and passive. Your passive immunity can be acquired from someone or something else, like your natural. So this natural immunity is through the passive transfer of antibody from mother to the fetus, like your breastfeeding and placental transfer of your IgG, while your artificial is the giving of your immunoglobulin, the giving of your plasma, okay, or monoclonal antibodies, like your mga convalescent plasma, Okay, sa mga COVID patients, and this is what we call your artificial passive immunity. The other one is your active immunity. So your active immunity, you have your natural acquired, okay, natural okay, acquired or a natural active immunity wherein it's naturally that you develop antibodies okay, when you had measles in infants or children or adults and you have chickenpox, you yourself develop antibodies. And if you are given the vaccine, and this is what we call your artificial active immunity, and this is what we are concerned with, okay, the COVID-19 vaccine is giving your vaccines, okay? So in COVID-19 vaccines, you have several platforms, okay, of your COVID-19 vaccine. It may be an inactivated virus, okay, so from your uh, Sinovac, okay, from, uh, viral vector, okay, viral vector, okay, from your Astra uh, 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 Seneca, Okay, and you have your live attenuated virus, okay, like the measles virus, a uh, measles vaccine, and you have the viral protein subunits. Okay, so mismo spike lang ang ibibigay sa So once you are injected with the COVID and the mRNA vaccines, your Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. So any of these vaccines or platform vaccines, when injected into a body, this one, for example, this is the okay, viral uh, structure. So, for example, this is a viral vector or inactivated virus. When they are given same all the same mechanism of action, they will be recognized by your APC or antigen presenting cells. So, your antigen presenting cells are your dendritic cells, okay, your macrophages. So, they will sila yung unang uh, kakausap dun sa antigen. So, they will try, okay, to get the antigen. Okay, the antigen presenting cells, and they will present the antigen to your naive T cells. Your naive T cells can be your CD4 cells or your helper T cells, okay, or your CD8 T cells, your uh, cytotoxic T cells, and your helper T cells. Now, your helper T cells is very important because your helper T cells will activate, see this one? So your helper T cells will activate the B lymphocytes so that once the B lymphocytes are activated, okay, it produces your plasma cells and your plasma cell produce antibodies and the antibodies will neutralize the SARS-CoV-2 virus. See, they bind to the spike protein so that the spike protein can no longer bind to the ACE2 receptor. And your B cells can also form the memory B cells. So the memory B cells will stay in our bone marrow. So when they are needed, okay, to the, uh, when you second encounter of this virus, your memory B cells will release okay, to protect our okay, body. Okay, or the anti-presenting cells can also directly activate the B cells without the help of your CD4. Now, the function of your CD8 is to eliminate the infected cells. Okay? So, sila yung parang basurero. Tatanggalin nila yung mga namatay na cells. Okay, so we have several candidates of vaccines and there are 10 vaccines are approved and licensed for general use. Okay, so these are the several, again, platform, mRNA, protein subunit, viral vector, and inactivated. So these are the countries that can produce your mRNA vaccine, your Moderna, your Pfizer. Okay, so these are the protein subunit. Okay, protein subunit, yung kumbaga spike lang yung ibibigay sa'yo. Okay, so Novavax, yung sabi lang one unit, uh, one dose ata, and your protein subunit sa China. So we have the viral vector, so we have the Johnson & Johnson. Okay, viral vector from AstraZeneca sa Oxford University. 
okay, viral vector vaccine Gamalaya sa Russia. So these are, and you have the most abundant vaccines, COVID-19 vaccines, is your inactivated. And your Sinovac is one of the inactivated virus vaccine. Okay, so you have two, two whole virus. We have the attenuated virus and inactivated virus. Now let's first discuss your attenuated virus. So your attenuated virus, these are live attenuated virus vaccine that contain function copies of the virus that have been made weekend. They okay, made weekend. Okay, so this is the SARS-CoV-2 virus. These are the uh, antigen, and this is the virus that have been made weekend. So once they are injected, they will not be recognized by your antigen presenting cells. And this antigen presenting cell present the antigen to the helper T cells to produce antibodies and memory B cells. Now, remember, if it's attenuated, okay, the virus does not cause disease, but the virus can replicate. Even if it replicates, it, uh, uh, it can still replicate inside the body and induce an immune response. So your immune response okay, is giving a sufficient time for memory cell reproduction. Okay, So they are capable of replicating within the cell such that this is an excellent immune response. But your attenuated has, uh, can uh, uh, receive, uh, you revert to original form. Okay, so pedding babuhay can cause disease. That's why it should not be given among immunocompromised individuals. Okay, there is a sustained infection like localized obesity, okay, and contamination of tissue culture, immunization error, and usually not given in pregnancy. I'll just answer this call. Sorry for me. Hello. Ah, nakuha mo na, ma'am? Ah, nandiyan na. Okay, naka-Stephans na po. Okay. Okay, so this is your attenuated. Kailangan din natin pwedeng ibigay sa SARS-CoV-2 yung attenuated. Kasi pag binigay mo, baka makonvert siya sa live virus and um, it can cause disease, uh, COVID-19. Okay, while your inactivated virus, like your Sinovac, okay, so the virus has been destroyed. Diba sa attenuated, weakened lang. Pero sa inactivated, the virus has been destroyed. When injected, okay, they are recognized by your antigen-presenting cells, present antigen to help T cells to produce antibody. Okay, so unlike your attenuated, it replicates. But in inactivated, the virus cannot replicate inside the body. So higher doses are needed, okay, two doses. So they are also alongside with an adjuvant to strengthen the immune response. So your inactivated is an antibody-mediated response. So meaning uh, this Sinovac in the later uh, may need booster doses yearly or annually. So this is your uh, inactivated, so may not last, may not always induce an immune response and may not be long-lived. So it may need a booster doses in the coming years. So this is still under study. Pa rin. So there's a long strong immune response as compared to your live attenuated vaccine. So it has no live component, no risk of inducing the disease. Okay, so it's an excellent stability. Okay. So this is the viral vector vaccine like your AstraZeneca. Ito yung SARS-CoV-2. Okay, so SARS-CoV-2, they get the genes that produce the spike protein. Okay, the genes that produce the spike protein, they place it in your adenovirus, the DNA of your adenovirus. So once injected, they will produce okay, the spike and they will be now recognized by your antibodies. So your AstraZeneca uses the... Okay, your AstraZeneca... Okay uses the chimpanzee adenovirus. While your J&J &J adenovirus 26, your CanSino adenovirus 5. So these are COVID-19 vaccines that uses your viral vectors, adenoviruses. Okay, so you have the subunit. Okay, the subunit vaccine, what only given to you is the spike. It's the spike protein. So when the spike proteins are injected, it is recognized by your antigen presenting cells to present the antigen to the helper T cells to produce antibody. So this is still antibody-mediated immunity, not cell-mediated, just like your inactivated COVID-19 vaccine. 
Okay, so this is subunit, no risk of inducing the disease, and it has excellent stability profile. So, but then this is a less strong immune response compared to your live vaccine. So, pinakababi sa parin is live vaccine, but we do not do this in COVID 19 vaccine because it may. So, only some of the vaccines like measles, MMR vaccines. Okay, so this is the last. This is the RNA vaccine from your Moderna and Pfizer. So, this is the RNA. Okay. So this is the uh, RNA okay, of the COVID-19, uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus. So it's covered by a lipid coat, nanoparticles. So that when injected into our body, it goes into the cell, cell cytoplasm. Okay, and once it goes into the cytoplasm, it will undergo transcription and translation to produce a spike. Okay, and the spike will induce antibody. Okay, will present the antigen to the antigen presenting cells okay, to present the uh, uh, antigen to the uh, uh, antigen presenting cell presenting the antigen to the helper T cell to produce or to stimulate the B cell to produce antibodies. Okay, so this is how. So it has a lipid coat so that when injected, it is not destroyed. Okay, because if you do not put a lipid coat and you inject directly the the RNA, it can be easily be destroyed in the cytoplasm. In order not to be destroyed, it has a lipid code muna para pagpasok niya sa loob ng cytoplasm ng cell, hindi siya masisira kagad. Okay, this is the study of your Pfizer. You do not need to review this. This is just a uh, research noon sa mga... Ay, sorry, nag-hug yung aking. Okay, now your for you have your reading assignment po. Now... Uh, so these are your reading assignment. Uh, so the, who gets the vaccine first? Of course, the frontline healthcare workers, followed by the indigent senior citizen, remaining senior citizens, remaining indigent population, and the uniform personnel. Okay, so this is uh, particularly in mRNA vaccines. So this is your reading assignment. So I have provided your reading assignment: vaccination of person mm -hmm. with underlying medical conditions. So pwede bang bakunahan? Just read on this. Okay, so person with history of SARS-CoV-2, pag nakaroon ba ng SARS-CoV-2, kailan natin babakunahan siya? Okay, so person with previously received passive antibody, for example, if you have, uh, nag-receive ka ng antibody, ng COVID-19 vaccines and you were beaten by a dog and you received a anti-tetanus or anti-rabies vaccine, when are you going to receive the vaccine? So get over with this one. Yan, usually 90 days if you have previous, okay, uh, uh, Vaccination should be deferred for at least 90 days to avoid interference. If you have a uh, uh, in money, uh, if you have uh, sabi kasi nila, if you have a recent viral infection, SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19 vaccine, it needs 90 days after. Okay, pero ngayon it has been amended that only if you had uh, SARS-CoV-2, only 14 days. Okay, pwede ka na only bakunahan. So, comparison with the known SARS-CoV-2 exposure. So, get rid of the uh, get uh, please read of this. So, vaccination is special population. Uh, am I going to vaccine a person with underlying medical condition? Okay, so yeah. So, but remember the only contraindication to vaccination if with anaphylactic reaction to the first dose. Yeah. So how do we vaccinate immunocompromised person? So these are guidelines. So a person with HIV immunocompromising. So read this. So pregnant women, am I going to vaccinate? Yeah. Yan yung mga sagot, mga tanong, and these are the answers. So am I going to vaccinate breastfeeding or lactating women? So these are the answers. Okay. So. Vaccine uh, counseling, this is what we call the reactogenicity. So when we are given the vaccines, we may experience fever, pain. Okay, So these are normal uh, side effects that are usually transient. In one to three days, it may disappear. So contraindication and precautions. So get over with this. So read this one. So this is the guidelines Okay, when during the vaccination. Vaccination. So may proceed with the vaccine precaution to vaccination, contraindication to vaccination. So this is the summary of your COVID-19 vaccine. Okay. So this is very important, your guidelines in your COVID-19 vaccine. But you do not need to study this one. These are researches lang na dinis ko lang sa, sa Ilocosur Medical Society. 
But this one, you have to study this one. Yung mga yan. 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 COVID-19 vaccine. So any more questions? If you have some questions, please raise your questions. Any questions? <laughs> 